This is the second part of the second lecture discussing the need of renewable energy. In the first part, we discuss about the burning of fossil fuels and pollution. In this part, we shall discuss about the hidden costs of fossil fuels. Ever since Chernobyl nuclear reactor in Ukraine underwent a huge accident and the city was devastated, there had been immense improvement in the construction and functioning of the nuclear reactors around the globe to minimize the dangers of radiation spread. Here is the picture taken from the rooftop of a residential building in Pripyat, Ukraine, showing the Chernobyl power plant and the city around. The second picture is of a modern nuclear power plant of two reactors which are dome shaped and the associated two huge cooling towers releasing non-radioactive water vapors. The electricity produced from the nuclear reactors are considered to be safe and pollution free, but the story is not clean that way. It is true that unlike fossil fuel fired power plants, the nuclear reactors do not produce air pollution or carbon dioxide while it is under operational conditions. But the process of mining and refining of the uranium ore and making reactor fuel for the production of energy requires large amount of energy. The construction of the nuclear reactor and the power plant itself require large amounts of metal and concrete, which in turn involves huge amounts of energy. If this energy demands are met from burning of the fossil fuels, it means that the emission created from burning of fossil fuels associated with producing electricity from the nuclear power plants release huge amounts of carbon dioxide to the atmosphere. Furthermore, the radioactive waste created by these reactors in the form of uranium mill tailings, spent reactor fuel, and another radioactive waste which remains dangerous for thousands of years. Such wastes are disposed in sealed storage containers covered with sealing barrier materials, for example, clay, and additional layers of soil, rocks, and radiation absorbing materials to prevent escaping of radiation into the atmosphere. When the nuclear reactor stops working, it is decommissioned. In the latter process, all the vital equipments are removed safely. This process takes several decades until the radiation level is completely eliminated and the place could be converted back to greenfield. The hidden costs of harvesting energy from the nuclear power plants is thus enormous. Oil spills are much frequently happening incidences around the world, but yet less talked about regarding pollution aspects. This is a picture of such an oil spill taken by NASA's Terra satellite on May 24, 2010. The sunlight illuminated the lingering oil slick of Mississippi Delta. The oil does not mix with water and floats on its surface, and the area it covers can be seen by the shining sunlight over it, and this is how oil changes the ocean water texture. The oil does not sink and keeps on floating. The reasons behind oil spills are many. The oil spills from sinking tanker is the mother of oil. One such accident that happened on March 16, 1978 when Amako Cadiz, a huge oil tanker, caused a major oil spill off the coast of Brittany, France. The vessel lost its control because of storms, broke in half and sank, spilling 
246,000 tons of light crude oil into the waters of English Channel. The sleek spread quickly, covering an area of 18 miles with 80 miles in length. It severely affected 76 beaches and have been reported to kill more number of marine lives till date. The largest oil spill in the history of petroleum industries owing to the accidents is Deepwater Horizon spill, also known as Gulf of Mexico oil spill, that happened in April 2010. The accident initiated right after a spill from a seafloor oil gusher, which caused a major explosion. It was estimated to cause 53,000 barrels of oil spilled into the Gulf of Mexico every day for over three months, amounting a total of 4.9 million barrels of oil spilled. It killed over 82,000 birds, 25,900 marine animals, 6,000 sea turtles, and hundreds of thousands of fishes. Oil spills from natural disasters or accidents cause more danger to the ocean ecosystems. Whereas the oil companies recover the financial losses from the insurance, but the nature pays the cost for years with no sign of recovery. Not all the incidences of oil spills is caused by natural disasters or accidents. Human greed sometimes caused such incidences to happen. One such incidence was the greed and war of 1991 and Kuwait oil reserves became the victim. It started with occupation of Kuwait by Iraqi troops destroying main oil pipes causing spills and the latter was set ablaze to foil the potential landing by US Marines. This indeed created huge fire and smoke which apparently inhibited US forces from moving in. Later on, the U.S. fighter bombers destroyed pipelines which created further spillage into the Persian Gulf. The war released 240 to 336 million gallons of crude oil to the ocean. As of the year 2019, there was recorded one major spill which caused more than 700 tons of oil released to the oceans and two minor spills which caused release of 7 to 700 tons of oils to the ocean. Apart from accidents, natural disasters, and wars, oil spills are also caused even more frequently by human negligence and carelessness, such as leakage in the moving tankers, barges, pipelines, refineries, drilling rigs, and storage facilities. Within 10 minutes after the spill is initiated, the oil spreads over a radii of 160 feet and create a sleek of fourth of an inch. Moving cargo ships, patrolling navy ships and boats also pollute the ocean waters, releasing machine oils, engine and propeller washouts. Ship repairings and halt anchor jetties also contribute hugely to the ocean pollution. The picture here shows the deep generation of shoreline vegetation and layer of oil spill after the release from the spills. It is estimated that the oil spills might have killed approximately 82,000 birds of 102 species, approximately 6,165 turtles and up to 25,900 marine animals which include bottle-nosed dolphins, spinner dolphins, melon-headed whales and sperm whales. The spilled oil clams have been observed to exist for months to years in enclosed sea and as well as open oceans before degradation. 10 to 30 percent of the spilled oil have been observed to be absorbed by sediments and suspended materials in the ocean waters. A part of this also settles down at the ocean bed.
Here are a few photographs taken from the sites of oil spills, creating life-threatening conditions to the living creatures. A bird covered in a thick layer of oil from Black Sea oil spill is shown here. Another bird killed, mummified and encrusted within the top hard layer of a dry oil lake in Kuwait desert. The picture was taken in the year 2008, indicating the incidents must have happened some time ago, probably during the Gulf Wars. Another picture is of a turtle covered with layers of oil and rescued by an environmentalist 20 to 40 miles offshore and taken for rehabilitation. Certainly, the oil spills have been creating more losses to the living creatures than the human capacities could ever recover or rehabilitate. Coral reefs are representatives of mutualistic relationship in the ocean ecosystem. Corals provide a safe housing for the zooxanthellae to photosynthesize. The zooxanthellae are algal cells which live within the coral polyps and protected from predation. In turn, the algae provides nutrients and minerals such as glucose, glycerol, amino acids to the corals to create calcium carbonate skeleton and grow. The oxygen produced from photosynthesis is utilized by the polyps with waste removal. The coral reefs enable the ocean to absorb huge amounts of carbon dioxide and act as carbon dioxide sink by the virtue of its symbiotic association with algae. And it can be utilized in the process of photosynthesis. This symbiotic association has been existing for more than 200 million years until in recent years, human activities began destroying it. Bleaching is the main reason behind the death of coral reefs, which ultimately became a significant reason for global heating. Natural bleaching may also occur because of environmental stress. In the bleaching, the tiny algae or the zooxanthellae are expelled out of the polyp housing and the corals turn colorless and dies. The stress conditions are increase in the ocean temperature, storms, and runoff pollutants or chemicals from the industries, which include herbicides, sunscreen ingredients, and acidification because of air pollution, high exposure of solar radiations, and the ultraviolet rays. Additionally, the oil spills are also dangerous for the corals. Once the oil comes in contact with the corals, it forms a layer on its surface and blocks it from breathing. This impedes their reproduction, growth, behavior, and in severe cases can kill them. Not only this, the oil spills also damages the fine balance in the microenvironment existing around these coral reefs, which include small fishes and other tiny microorganisms and the creatures. Here is a picture of a healthy and a bleached coral. Another picture is of a bleached Acropora coral and behind it is the normal coral which is alive. Here is a case study on the coral bleaching in the Great Barrier Reef. The satellite image of the Great Barrier Reef is shown here in the picture and in the adjacent is the map of Great Barrier Reef showing the results of aerial surveys on 911 reefs. The entire length of the Great Barrier Reef has been divided in three zones, namely the northern sector, the central sector, and the southern sector. In the northern sector, out of 522 reefs surveyed, 81% of the reefs were found to be severely bleached and only less than 1% is not bleached and the rest was found to be moderately bleached. In the central sector, out of 226 reefed surveys, 33% was found to be severely bleached and 10% was not bleached at all, and the rest was found to be moderately bleached. In the southern sector, out of 163 reefs surveyed, only 1% was found to be severely bleached 
and 25% was found to be safe and not bleached, whereas the rest, 70 to 74% was found to be moderately bleached. Overall, 7% of the Great Perry Reef has avoided coral bleaching. Eutrophication and hypoxia have become prominent consequences of pollution and one of the main reasons behind dying of a large number of aquatic bodies such as rivers, ponds, lakes, canals, ditches, pools, lagoons, freshwater springs, etc. It is commonly caused by human activities and sometimes naturally. Eutrophication arises because of oversupply of nutrients such as nitrogen and phosphorus to the water bodies. This becomes very common when there is overuse of fertilizers to raise good crop yields. The excess nutrients either leach to the soil and drain out to underground water table and the connected water bodies or it is washed or run off only to reach to any aquatic body nearby. The excess nutrients in the water causes cyanobacteria to grow and later on other algal species can also grow and gradually it covers the entire water surface blocking the oxygen and light from reaching beneath. This kills the aquatic plants growing beneath the surface which cannot get light to support photosynthesis. Eventually, the algal blooms die and sink to the bottom of the water body which is then decomposed by the bacteria and consumes the oxygen in water causing severe depletion. This causes fishes to suffocate and die out of oxygen that is hypoxia. A few photographs here showing a much familiar eutrophication examples we can observe in our localities. First picture is eutrophication in a river by dense cover of cyanobacteria. And the second picture is the eutrophication in a canal. The third picture tells a bigger story where eutrophication occurs in a large aquatic body like a sea disrupting the ecosystem as in the case of northern part of the Caspian Sea. The eutrophication leads to depletion zones in the oceans which form dead zones or kill fish or fish die of zones. Human activities have created at least 50 dead zones in the oceans which has altered almost half of the land surface on the planet and this has caused dangers to the most endangered species 1000 times greater than ever before. This has become a severe concern to the global warming and climate change. One of the major dead zones have been observed at the off coast of San Diego, California, created by the decay of algal blooms. Dead zones are also created by heavy oil spills. The oil floating on the surface of the water blocks sunlight and oxygen to reach underneath causing feces to die or flee to other regions. This is one of the major setback to the marine culture or fishery farms in the coastal regions. Here is an enlarged view of the globe illustrating dead zones. The red circles show the location and size of the many dead zones. Such dead zones are in plenty in the east coast of the USA and Mexico and some part in the west coast. The northwest part of the Europe and east part of the Asia near Korea and Japan. Dead zones have grown explosively in the past half century. The black dots show dead zones of unknown size which are few but is still considerably many. Next in the list is the ocean acidification. Oceans are the largest sink of carbon dioxide by the virtue of the coral reefs and aquatic ecosystem. The natural circulation of carbon dioxide between the atmosphere and the ocean is shown here in the picture. Here, carbon dioxide is precipitated 
and sedimented in the form of carbonates dissolved into the water to reach to the aquatic vegetation and help in upwelling of the nutrients. The excess amount of carbon dioxide generated by pollution when enters into the ocean waters, it initiates an additional process, that is, formation of carbonic acid as shown in this schematic diagram. The carbonic acid molecules dissociate to form proton or hydronium ions and carbonates. Increase in the concentration of carbon dioxide in water simultaneously increases the concentration of protons. The additional proton combines with carbonate ions to form bicarbonates causing a depletion of carbonate ions. This creates deficiency of calcium to the calcifying aquatic animals to build their shells. Also, if the condition prevails, the shells begin to dissolve, causing death of the organism. This picture describes the consequences of ocean acidification. In a laboratory experiment, a terapod shell is demonstrated to be dissolved within just 45 days in a simulated seawater adjusted to an ocean chemistry projected for the year 2100. This brings us to conclude the second part of this lecture. Here is an assignment question for you. Which part of the pollution discussed in this lecture do you think is most dangerous to the life on the earth and why? Please write one to two paragraphs supporting your viewpoint and email to me. We shall now continue to the third part of this lecture and discuss about global heating and extinction of species on the earth.